Часто слышу и читаю про разные откаты и проблемы, которые могут возникнуть. I often hear and read about different backlashes and issues that may arise once someone begins on the path of magical transformation of their consciousness. So I have a question. Why do these backlashes affect the ones who are close to us? If someone deserves a backlash for certain problems, they should be the one who answers for them. How can someone protect themselves and their loved ones in these cases? Thank you for your question. We often talk about it, as a matter of fact, to varying degrees. The question of backlashes and blowbacks comes up in all of our sessions. This phenomenon does occur indeed. You inquire as to how you might protect your loved ones from such problems. My answer to you will be the same as the one I give to all of my students. Have no loved ones. Have no loved ones to such proximity to you that they have to account for the backlashes of your practices. This is a short answer, and now I will unpack and clarify it for you. I will explain why I said it this way, since my statement may be misconstrued as implying that one must be utterly alone, hide in the woods in a hermitage, in a cave not seeing or hearing anyone. Unfortunately, Many of our predecessors used to perceive it all in this exact way. That it's necessary to alienate yourself in a monastery, to cut yourself off from everyone so that not to encounter these problems. This is a simple way, the easiest one of them. Physical isolation, mental isolation, do not talk to anyone, have no contact with anyone. However, this is not the only way. If we understand the mechanism of these so-called backlashes correctly, the process of the so-called retribution, as well as distribution of the problem not only to yourself, but also to all those who are connected to you. So when does this happen? The issue of magical practice-related backlash, which affects one's loved ones, occurs when you and your loved ones all together collectively form one single whole, a totality. If you were the sole representative of this totality, you would be the only one facing the backlash, yet you obviously aren't a totality without your loved ones. That is, they are like your body parts like an arm, a leg or a head. And that is precisely the biggest problem. You shouldn't come to magic with an incomplete consciousness. And that's the reason as well. Since magical power and informational current would only flow through a complete consciousness, an incomplete consciousness will constantly try to make itself whole. So you must somehow complete yourself to a whole. There are different ways to do that. Some people start a non-ordinary family. It better be a non-ordinary one. Others have children. Some adopt cats and dogs as supplemental elements for themselves when their own energy happens not to be enough. Some people surround themselves with students in large numbers, forming an order, a collective, and by tormenting their disciples bringing themselves to a whole. Yes, they form an order to make a complete unit. Some people use their clientele. Those same mages and sorcerers sometimes redirect backlashes of their own magical practices onto their clients. These things do happen. Quite scammy, yes, but they do happen. Why? Because they themselves are incomplete. Your loved ones will face problems when you make a mistake while witching around, receiving a backlash as a result. And this backlash comes to head this whole that you are a part of, and you present a totality, a whole, only together with your loved ones, and so they get taken for a ride together with you. That's unfair, it was me and not them, you say. But you're not a complete unit. For you to become a unit, a magical totality, you need to surround yourself with bodies, have close bonds with others, and energy flows along these bonds. And so the sum of these bonds is what makes you whole. That is why, naturally, your loved ones, the people who are voluntarily connected to you, the people who love you, the ones whom you love, 
are also the ones who will be on the receiving end alongside you. Because the universe sees complete consciousnesses. Even if that complete consciousness consists of a thousand consciousnesses that are incomplete, it still will see wholeness. At a certain point this is called an egregore. So you and your loved ones are simply one complete egregore. And so it takes the blow. So what should you do? There are two options. First, don't screw up. That is, practice your craft properly. Learn how this world works first, before trying to pry it open with a dull knife. Knowledge comes first, then the power. That's the law. And the second option, which doesn't negate the first one, of course, is to become whole. First of all, ask yourself a question. I have a great number of bonds and a great number of relatives. What do they do for me? What function do they fulfill for me? Make a list, write it all down clearly, and recognize that if someone close to me fulfills this function, then I am not fulfilling that function for myself. The next logical question arises. Why is that? Why am I not performing this function for myself and immediately correct this mistake? This way you won't burden your loved one with unnecessary functionality and excessive value. And this bond that sustains their function for you as such will vanish. Another kind of bond will appear, maybe, or maybe not. But at least that will be honest. This is why people say that it's difficult for majors to have loved ones, family, children and any kind of entourage. Because it's not that they don't love them or need them. They do so indeed, but in a different way. In order not to use your loved ones as a shield in dealing with their own issues, you must stop viewing them as a function that compensates you to a whole. And instead, see something different. Wouldn't you agree, colleagues, that this would be a different kind of love, a different bond? This is a different relationship that is not built on mutual need. Actually, that's not quite the right way to put it. Let me think of the right term. A relationship that is not built on forced mutual dependence, involuntary dependence, just because it happened that way. Because we compensate each other to a whole, and this joins us together as Siamese twins. And if that's a fitting analogy, then you can imagine how a Siamese twin would feel when their sibling gets hurt. Yes, they would feel the same in the area where they connect. Typically, a family forms such a unit. When egregores start fighting, they see each other rather than individual personalities who make up the egregore. And the strike would usually hit the weakest of the bunch. Going back to the beginning of the completeness question, and how to identify who the weakest one is. Assume you and your partner form a complete unit. In this case, two persons make up a complete unit. However, one member of that unit takes up a bigger share, while the other takes up a smaller one. For example, you are 0.7 and your partner is 0.3. The blow will land on 0.3 because it's easier to target, and this will feel it the fastest. Hence this visible effect. The problem is mine, but for some reason it's my partner that suffers. 
That's unfair. It isn't fair in terms of individual responsibility. However, you are seen as an individual only when all of you are combined. And the blow lands on the weakest one, the weakest one of the group. That's the reason. So make a list of all your bonds. And the question here is simple. Either protect yourself or solve the question of your bonds. Or don't practice magic. This is where protection can help you. Amulets, protecting staves of various kinds, runic staves, and certain magical artifacts are commonly used to serve this protective role of compensating one to a whole. So that together with an amulet, you get to be seen as a total unit. But in this case, you will have to cut yourself off from everyone, at least for a while, at least visually, at least cast an illusion spell that will prevent this egregorial system from seeing the bonds emanating from you and keeping it from targeting these bonds, meaning striking the most painful spot where the nerves are exposed. But I'll tell you that the higher the egregore is, hierarchy-wise, the clearer they see where these bonds are and where there aren't any. Where the consciousness of a mage or a sorcerer is covered with amulets and where it's not covered at all. Where consciousness is complete and where there's a magical boost in the form of amulets. Somebody equal to you may not see that. They may see a protection. They may see wholeness, but they will not see where this protection comes from or what this wholeness actually is. But an egregore of a higher level, that of religion, the state or magical orders, they will see it clear as day. Therefore, as a rule, you won't be able to deceive them with amulets. So these are the three reasons. Three reasons and as a result, three possible actions. Protect yourself. Review all of your bonds and become complete. Complete by yourself to an extent that your loved ones don't get harmed. Choose the right way.